So my name is Diana Winslow and this is a video regarding service delivery records interface and formats, errors, um, permeations or limited view error. This is me. I'm Diana Winslow. I'm a professional social worker in Oklahoma City. I'm retired from practice as a mental health clinician. I graduated in 1988 with a master's degree in professional social work from the University of Oklahoma. I'm retired as an ACSW, LCSW, and my contact information is D-I-A-N-M-S-W at gmail.com. Information regarding me or work that I've done regarding the topic of the sexual assault response, which is turning out to be gross records errors and mismanagement of resources, can be found under WordPress, YouTube, LinkedIn, Examiner.com, Merchant Circle, Oklahoma City, and Google+. My daughter was a white female born with no health limitations at the Grading Memorial Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia, 2004. I don't experience the hospital as the source of the problems that we're having. And if you've looked at some of the other information regarding my family or my questions about systems, I think that makes sense. I'm trying to make this video a little less static because it'll tell me I'm too technical, so got magnolias blooming at my house. I think every time you go to the doctor, they try to shove pieces of paper in their hand that explain to you that HIPAA is a federal point of regulation on some specific types of documentation of services. Not every service that appears to be a medical service or every person that you talk to has to abide HIPAA and that's going to become a problem with regards to trying to track this further. Every complaint that I have filed around anything that I can discover has been refused by every level of service that might be involved in the service provision or oversight regarding the service. Some of that is because this appears to be racketeering and records to defraud me of custody of my child. There's multiple other videos that explain that process, the first of which is uh, regarding the HHS ACF records errors regarding the Oklahoma City Court Inner Document by the Oklahoma DFACS Office, DHS is what that's called. Uh, accountability to HIPAA comes with policy, custom, and law, and it's determined by the person or systems participating in a defined cooperative role. So people who have a license have more responsibility to this role of HIPAA than other people. And the service system has to subscribe to pay sources or types of service provision, licensure rules, um, along those lines. So you get the picture. There's a lot of things that you have to have agreeing at the same time in order for this to be something that would be applied. HIPAA is held under the Health and Human Services for the U.S. government. The goal is to generate a set of data held uh, that is sacred to agreements to protect the public. So your public health records are organized in certain ways and uh, who can look at them and who can touch them or who can change them is supposed to be controlled. And that's kind of an interesting problem because we've gone from colloquial word of mouth about what you're supposed to be doing and that that's your medical record to somebody jotting a few notes on a piece of paper to formal charts that became really big to converting those charts to electronic services, and that's what this is about. Um, eight years ago, the man who was the head of uh, Cyber Directive Services for the Health and Human Services was privately convicted on a child porn charge, which included snuff films as his penchant, so this person was making these films. How this guy got in the job with the federal government, I don't know. 
uh, that he was there for eight years is always a question who else it is in service systems that participates in this sort of behavior that apparently was unregulated and is still not really assessed because this guy got convicted on a private charge not on his job when you get convicted of one set of charges of a certain type it sort of throws all things to the wind whether or not that means what it sounds like it means that I don't know but I've never had anybody answer that question for me and a lot of people including state governors who are making decisions solely about their health and human services about their children's services their women's services 70 percent of all women in the US at some point in their life most likely have had data entered into a health and human services account and so this guy would have had access uh, with a bunch of other people to a whole bunch of things that have to do with a lot of people and when you find things that are as odd as what has happened with my family you kind of have to wonder how many other people maybe have suffered small or large things it's also true that in the same time frame that this man was convicted that a federal database of federal employees was breached in a completely separate circumstance but those people were provided with education about what happened with multi-part resources to protect their personal information and we didn't get that as the public regarding this man and his role regarding this job so I'd like to suggest that there's something worth considering regarding that I'm not asking you to say ABC this is how it is these are all speculative based on systems knowledge and experience and other systems things that appear to be lying around we're on now to the seven degrees to Kevin Bacon solution to the problem because we've tried filing complaints and no one's listening so public education may provide you with the opportunity to speak out so at the hospital where my kid was born there's bisecting services for sure with the Emory teaching hospital so my kid was born at Grady Hospital which is a public hospital in Atlanta and it's a teaching hospital that interfaces with a couple of places but the identified people that were coming to us came to us as Emory staffers, Emory students, Emory residents, Emory fellows and in that the electronic files would be shared between these groups not just the hospital where she was born so other people touch the records whether their system was the same records and it's just folding out to each other group or they're only allowed in a partitioned access to look at a paper file and then look at an electronic record where they'd enter their information or only look at an electronic record and not look at a paper file it becomes very interesting who's allowed to see and touch what so there's the employees of the hospital itself people who are contractors, other companion systems that might be involved, volunteers, students, research, uh, and any of these things swing accountability, liability, and tractability. So accountability is who's doing what and are you supposed to be doing that. Liability is if you make an error, who's responsible. And then tractability is being able to look at all those things. These things are data imprinted so every time you touch the computer you have to open the computer that you're using to enter the data with a passcode and some sort of approved ID all of that comes forward after multiple levels of background checks depending upon what it is you're doing but if you're a person who's working under an employee or under say a staff at one of these schools uh, how you'd get into the record and what you are supposed to be able to see or do becomes an interesting prospect but you're talking about because as a teaching hospital you're talking about hundreds of people on rotations coming through uh, at any given point in time during the time that you're in care so your pregnancy is nine months your stay in the physical hospital is two days uh, and then there's whatever your community-based follow-up care is with your medical provider after So none of those things above include any uh, addition of a private health care, public health care, or any other data collected by anybody else who wants to sort of roll it around uh, in your name. So I have a stalker that Oklahoma City Police Department still has not charged and has not publicly named. Uh, there's law enforcement involved in it 
three states, uh, multiple counties, uh, Child Protective Services in three states, multiple counties, and a miscellane miscellaneous other people. How's that? It's been a big adventure for the last 10 years. My kid's 12. So that's BISEC number one as Emory Teaching Hospital. BISEC number two is preloading of data. So if you were an existing customer, which I was not, coming to Grady Hospital from another public health service, you might already have an existing account. And in that existing account, you would be rendered information regarding um, the person. So if that person had been to care before, they'd have a pre-existing file and you'd only open the file. So I've got a person that has a name alert problem. That again is covered in another circumstance. We don't know if it's her, uh, if it's a Frankenstein file of just mishmash or if it's possibly the woman whose name is similar to mine adopted a child from someone else and if that person had a similar name was a relative um, or something so we don't know where the cross-up came and we don't know when it came uh, but if you're looking at birth era records the Georgia Public Health is a heel stick for infant screening so they test for metabolic, metabolic and genetic problems uh, in your child's blood and you have 90 days to correct errors. My child was stuck twice at the hospital, uh, two heel sticks at the hospital before she left, and a lab draw at another date, none of which matched the information that was provided to me this year, which is 2016, from the Georgia Health Department. So, but this preloads. The test is taken before you leave the hospital. Um, the results post into an account of a predetermined non-rotation physician that you'll be seeing uh, outpatient unless you pick someone other than who they picked and then of course it loads to that person but either way it automatically is electronically sent into your medical record before your kids even left the hospital and before you've gone to this other appointment the fact that there was a lab draw and then what the results of that will post at a later time. So the Georgia heel stick loads with a live birth for a first peds appointment to physicians at Emory or at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta uh, to a physician on a rotating teaching basis. So there's medical students in that rotation and residents who are at this uh, initial gravy system and then after. The person who's pulling the Georgia heel stick, I believe is an employee of the hospital it was the same person who was attending my child with regards to clean up after birth uh, and doing weights and measures and all of that good stuff so it's the same person the same person pulled the double heel stick uh, and, and it wasn't someone else on some other day with some other whatever but it's like okay so where are our records if those are ours where are ours so Georgia Public Health can't seem to explain it and Grady's highly concerned as you might imagine they're alarmed about what's happened we're alarmed because we've been beaten to a pulp by multiple groups of people uh, for no reason on bizarre fabrications or gross practice errors in uh, medical services. So we think it's uh, the fabrications, not health-related failed care. But it could be health-related applied care that was unnecessary. So that's kind of a problem, too. So the bisection number two is that the automatic records load would be electronically held by the hospital so there's six of these. The hospital, the Georgia Public Health Department for the heel stick and then later for vaccinations, Children's Healthcare Atlanta, which has like 20 locations, the Georgia defects uh, for statistical reference, welfare issues, Medicaid and potential child protective services issues, the Emory University Medical Facilities uh, regarding consultations, because uh, we had some, and the vital records for Georgia. Any of those things then cross-reference with your later life uh, and just continue to self-populate. Whether any of these things rolls again into school service systems or whatever else, because we've had this all over the place. These have been wrong and entered and re-entered all over the place. So this is the format. You have a shared file service of some kind. There's a paper record. I've seen the paper record at 
uh, the hospital, but the child records weren't in the record. So it was my record regarding my health, regarding my stay at the hospital, and then regarding the fact that she was born. The paper records uh, identified the subscribing care services, and then the electronic records could be held uh, at the hospital, but they could be also held with the other subscribers. So again, you saw that there were six of those. When you're filling out things at the hospital, like you go in and you have to answer a bunch of questions, and either you do it by hand, you're given a bunch of forms, fill this out, sign this, uh, or you're asked to sit at a computer, or you're asked to sit with a tech at a computer, and the com person data enters for you while you're talking. That's relatively new. Um, so you have an application for service, various handwritten documents. These things include your intake, your diagnostics, your progress, your discharge planning and placement, which is any referrals. So that's your preload information to other resources. When you're done with the data, you pass it to somebody else. So that's good care. You want that to happen. But there really isn't any sort of a resource to address what happens if you pick up the wrong file or write the wrong thing. So, okay, in that, then there's all these terms that you need to know. And again, this is what I figured out so far, assuming that these things are true. That somebody didn't just sit down with a bunch of paper and type out something and make up a case. Because that's a possibility as well. But there's a system behind this of cheating that has to do with racketeering records and uh, defrauding custody. And I'll tell you some more about how the medical records might play into that in a separate video. So, misfiling has to do with picking up the wrong uh, other person's chart. Misdocumentation would have to do with somebody told you something and you wrote down the wrong word or you typed in the wrong letter. Misunderstanding uh, would be that you didn't comprehend what they were telling you, the phone rang or you had a fire drill or something went wrong and you misdocumented whatever was being said to you uh, in a misunderstanding. So one is a transcription error, the other one is that you didn't comprehend what was being said. Misinterpretation. Uh, somebody used a term that you thought meant one thing and they meant something else and you might be wrong or they might be wrong but then you wrote down the wrong thing. Uh, misinterpretation of any part of the circumstance. Uh, people under stress or in the high risk situations. Uh, Grady is a trauma hospital. It's famous for gang related gunshots and so um, anything is a possibility. It's a very high foot traffic environment. There's also a lot of people that come from third world cultures, and so uh, that's also very interesting as a process. So, A failed name alert would be if uh, somebody has a similar name to you, and they pick up the other person's instead of yours. So there's supposed to be an identifier that marks your chart and says don't get the other person's chart, it's only this one. That's true whether you were admitted on the same day to the same service at the same time to the same doctor or you're admitted on two totally different units and two totally different days and two totally different years. The fact that you have two patients who have similar names is supposed to be flagged on the papers itself, but also flagged on the electronic filing system, uh, or even when you're opening files, there's supposed to be a way to do that in your searching down the list of this person, that person. So the other person in our case is a uh, is the woman whose name is similar is 10 years younger than me but I've seen documents that identify someone who's uh, six to eight months older than me and so um, fabrication and racketeering and records is where somebody just makes up shit to get your goat take your kid uh, identity theft of course is if somebody else like steals your information which is completely a possibility given what has happened already and how many people that could be applied to and under what circumstances is an interesting prospect. Um, reporting party problems, incompetence or confusion. So I've been accused of being incapable of making a true statement and incapable of accurately reporting the problem. And so instead of all these other things above it, we settled on the last one. And again, it appears I use this other person's file uh, to do consults and to generate that answer too. So that's interesting. So my family is dealing with, over time, at least three states of child protective services, law enforcement, administrative court, juvenile court, child protective services court, civil court, and supreme court, and two different countries because my child's father is a UK citizen. I couldn't tell you at this point which country my child is a citizen of, and she has been issued no less than four birth certificates. There's probably a fifth at this point. 
in the United States, in the state of Georgia, uh, wrongly, and uh, may have been issued some sort of identity change in another state, was issued a passport on their own papers, and the U.S. State Department had 14 months of notice to address that and did not. So we're not just dealing with one problem. Uh, part of the reason that birth certificates of interest is because it, it's also generated by the hospital. They're one of the groups. They're one of the groups of uh, vital records. Yeah, they're one of the groups here. So uh, it isn't just a, a random comment for me to talk about that. That came at the hospital, came out of the hospital. Was there an error with that? And the answer to that is yes. The birth certificate that was issued on my child for the original birth certificate had a wrong county of residence. And in the wrong county of residence, that has perpetuated the right to pursue legal actions in a county where uh, where that didn't fit. So you got me as to how it is we manage all these things. And it's no one's job to deal with it. Um, the absence of informed consent is present. Law enforcement, child protective services, students and consultants, and people who are service or maintenance persons to uh, systems ultimately don't have any tractable accountability and can touch things, do things that the general public might not be thinking about. So if the law enforcement comes and asks to look at your materials, they can. If Child Protective Services has to come look at your materials, they can. They can look at the paper file, and I believe they can look at the electronic file. Um, but again, do you see that if we've got six sets of groups, somebody went around to all these six sets of groups, you've got time for that? You don't have time to take police reports and act in some specific circumstances, but we've got time to go around and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Or was somebody else hired as a consultant on a court order uh, like a private investigator to go around and do some more things. So we've got some interesting things. Records and documentation is one place that electro electronic records are held. Records retention and billing is another place that records are held. Cross-reference access for a purpose goes back to these six, pe six sets of people. And again, hundreds of people can be in any of these at the point of service at the months it takes for you to get your prenatal care, your follow-up care, your ongoing life care, or your admission to the hospital. Um, any interface that we've had with the HHS ACFCB, so the Children's Bureau of Federal Services that runs your Child Protective Services, your Health and Human Services for Family Services, the Office of Civil Rights for HIPAA, State uh, Alternative Auditors, COANET, which is a type of credential for accrediting social services agencies, uh, JACO, uh, I've seen CARF in, in some of this, so C-A-R-F, CARF, JACO uh, accredits a hospital, and then of course independent licensure or certifications on any person that's providing service. Any documentation about those things would be held in other places. It'd be held in an administrative office, it's not in your file, they're not even required to remark that you ever had a question or had a service in your file uh, because that's supposed to be a confidentiality issue but if the issue was that your confidentiality was violated and your records were altered they don't have to correct it they just have to insert whatever it was that you said in your file except they don't put it in your file they put it in an administrative file and none of this ever bisects anything else so it's a real crazy collection of junk Electronic records are typically in an interface of billing and charting, uh, and this is relatively new, so only since the 1980s has that been around. Generally speaking, in a system, you have a paper service system, and before you got into any of these corporately managed things, you had these homegrown electronic documentation processes. Uh, those began with virtual offices where you maybe were a person that was a contractor and you'd go around to agencies or hospitals to work and so you didn't need an office or an office staff, you just needed somebody to pick up your phone and return pages to you. So the answering services were first, uh, which might be your own office or a clearinghouse or the hospital. And then you move to this virtual office, which was solely for you, uh, where you can receive a variety of things. but. These are subscribed electronic health information systems that we're talking about now, and they're for documentation. They have a combined function of billing, 
do they have features like Facebook or Blackboard uh, at the corporate office that owns them? And do these then cross-reference each other anywhere? See, I hadn't thought about that one until today. Uh, whoever owns the service system for the health information's electronic documentation in the hospital is one service, and then your records retrieval, at least for Grady, is out of California. That's a separate system. I don't know if the retrieval of your past records, so the archive of your records at Grady Hospital is housed out of California. You gotta write and ask them, they'll give you a dollar amount, you gotta pay it, uh, and then they'll send you back whatever it is that they have. But that might not be what you're looking for because it might be held under something else. On a smaller scale, in a practice, there's community-based policy, which is whatever runs the agency. Uh, there's custom, this is how we do it. There's law, which are formally written things about what you're allowed to do or not do, and those would be guided by state laws, and then they're also guided by federal laws of multiple topics. Whoever is the owner or the proprietor for the property might be a clinician or they might be a business person. Uh, there's people that are on the property that are staff, and so the owner might be a staff member who's actually a provider. That's usually how it works, but in Oklahoma, that's not necessarily the case. You might have somebody who is a car lot owner on one hand and is running the counseling office or the healthcare office on the other hand. You're allowed to have two jobs and have two services, but what the heart of that person is might determine what happens next for you. So there's staff uh, who may be licensed and those people might be covered under HIPAA, but they might not be. But I'll tell you what, at every property you've got housekeeping people, maintenance people, and people that are involved with security for the building. You've also got uh, security that has to do with the actual service of the system for your computers. There's telephone, faxes, computers, mail, alarm, and banking involved in every one of these things. There's visitors, clients, contractors, consultants, and students in many places, definitely in these places. So that's my spiel about who uh, is around and seven degrees to Kevin Bacon is probably going to solve my case with some uh, structural familiarity applied as well. So that's me.